One of the things I love about pike fishing is how diverse it can be. You can be fishing big lakes, big reservoirs, fishing the brackish water, archipelago, boats, jerk bait, or you can just be enjoying an evening, enjoying the scenery, taking a walk along a stream here and just fishing a little soft swim bait on a light spinning rod. It has been a long and unusually cold and icy winter, and it's finally time for the first pike trip of the year. For months, I've been looking forward to today. It's finally springtime here in Denmark, and the sun has come out, temperature is rising. It's about seven degrees today, and uh, two weeks ago, this place was covered in ice, and finally it's warming up a little bit. And hopefully that's going to get the pike on the move and getting feet in. But the water's still cold. It's about three degrees. And usually that means uh, fishing real slow. And fly fishing can be real effective in the winter because a fly you can fish extremely slow, but it still has a lot of life because of the different flash or feather materials. You can get a fly that's really pulsating and very vibrant and really can tease the pike while you fish it very slow. If you fish with hard baits and you fish them very slow, that can still be effective, but they're not gonna be as lifelike in the water. But today I'm not fly fishing, I'm spin fishing. I'm not sure exactly where the pike are. I wanna cover a lot of water today. I wanna to be able to cast far um, so I can get out over the little bit deeper water. And I'm also just in the mood for spin fishing today. So what I'm fishing with is a Bombarda float. That way I can cast the fly about three or four times as far as I could with the fly rod. And I can cover a lot of water with the fly just behind this Bombarda float. This type of fishing is mainly used for uh, sea trout fishing in, here in Scandinavia where it's really popular. Not a lot of people use it for pike fishing. Actually hardly any do. And uh, that's too bad because it can be a good way to get your fly in front of the pike's face, especially if you want to fish slow, but at other times of the year, if you want to fish fast, there's no reason you can't fish them fast either. And you can get these floats, these Bombarda floats, I'm calling them floats, but you can get them in sinking and in intermediate versions, so you can fish a little bit deeper if that's what you want to do. Today I'm using the floating one. Right now the fly I'm using has a little weighted cone head, so that's letting the fly sink a little bit on the pauses or if I fish it slow, so the fly's probably about down to half a meter, one meter. The Bombarda I'm using today here is a 25 gram floating version. Um, has these to help it cast a little better, and this long plastic stick helps it steer through the wind so you can cast it far and not get the line tangled. This little thing here uh, is called a Bombarda stick. Um, you can use any old plastic stick, or if you break one of your Bombardas, you can use that. And what this does is when it's flying through the air, it keeps the fly a little bit away from the main line so the fly doesn't get caught as easy up over the main line. And that happens every now and then anyway, but you just gotta untangle it. Um, then I've got a little swivel, a little stop just to protect the knot here. And then I have about eight feet of um, 
20 pound fluorocarbon test. And then I have, uh, after the leader, I have a little bite tippet of a 40 pound titanium wire. And then I have the fly. And the fly that I'm using right now out here, where it's just a little bit deeper, meter, meter and a half, um, has a little weighted cone head just to let the fly sink a little bit down and, and, and kind of get a little bit deeper on the drop. The great thing about this uh, spin fishing with a Bombarda is uh, it lets you cover a lot of water and it lets you fish with flies. If you tie your own flies or you like fishing with a fly but you want to fish with a spin rod on certain days, it's a real effective method. And one of the great things about it, besides covering a lot of water, is compared to hard bait fishing with jerk baits or swim baits or something like that, you can fish the bait real, real slow and still have it looking real lively. A fly like this, either in flash or in, in feathers or different materials, is going to pulsate a lot when you fish it real slow. And uh, sometimes when the water's cold like it is today, that's real effective. The pike will just kind of sneak up behind the fly, take a look at it, and it'll be undulating and pulsating and just looking real teasing. And then they'll just have to come up and grab it, hopefully. I'm fishing fairly slow, and I'm kind of reeling in at a regular pace to kind of get the fly to stop and move, stop and go. And that gets the materials pulsating real live. If I was just spinning in at sort of one real regular pace, the fly would swim more than it would pulsate. And right now I want to fish it slow and pulsating. Right there towards the end of the cast, I always just kind of stop it a little bit. The bombarda is the weight in the cast, so it's going to be carrying the fly a couple meters behind it. And if you stop the, the bombarda right before it lands, it's going to get the fly to turn over so you get your leader stretched out and uh, it doesn't tangle and you're fishing at the right angle from right from the start. Ah, took that right on the spin stop. Yeah. Not a big fish, but it feels good to have a fish at the end of the line. Brackish water pike. Back you go. Nice. Let's get one more. Fish on. Feels like a decent one.
I'm trolling for Pike with Christian Miller from Denmark. Christian has a great amount of experience fishing with this particular method over large water masses where he works several lures in different depths. We're fishing with three rods on each side of the boat and four of the rods are fishing with a side planer which is mounted directly on the line. This way the lures spread out to the sides and we can cover a very large area. The technique for fishing with side planers is very simple. While the boat is moving one to two knots, you let out your lure to the desired length here around 20 to 30 meters. The side planer is then attached with a clip and a line clamp at an angle that will pull the side planer and lure out to the side and away from the boat. In this case, we're fishing a crankbait about four to five meters down and 40 to 50 meters behind the boat. The depth of fishing depends on the choice of lure, boat speed, and distance to the side planer. Christian is fishing a large alien eel, which is one of his favorite lures for this style of fishing and has given him great success on earlier trips. It is late spring and the weather is very varied. Good conditions, but not much happens even though we try a variety of areas. Oh, I think I had a strike there. Yes, it's a fish. He's out there pretty good. Yeah, yeah. He's angry. Oh, I think this is a nice fish, actually. Be careful now. Typical after spawn fish here in May. Four, four and a half kilo fish. Bye bye. Nej, men var det hook eller vad var det? Oh, oh, fish on, fish on. Oh, super. Hook up. This one's still kind of deep. I want to get a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna put So with the side planers here, we're fishing sort of a broad area and we got different lures working at different depths. Yeah. And exactly. um, and also we're fishing over different depths. Yeah, exactly. And do you think the pike are up in the water? Or do you think they're down on the bottom? And, and, and what kind of depths do you, do you like to fish? I actually over? think they, they right now, this time of year, they're, you know, they're, they're both, you know. Yeah, I can see a lot of the pike that we have caught today, they have been standing on the bottom, you know. Um, but the water here is, is the, the visibility. They have on exactly, them, exactly, yeah, exactly yeah. on the belly, and they got they got mud on the belly, you know. Mm -hmm. But the visibility in the water right now, the side is, is actually quite good, you know. So um, yeah, it's no problem fishing high high in the water. You, the yeah. fish will rise to, to grab the bait. They'll see the bait, bait and they'll come up. 
And these, uh, these eels uh, that we've had uh, a, a good success with today, about how deep do they fish when you're fishing behind a planer like this? Uh, right now where we fish them uh, 30, 20, 30 meters behind the boards um, and with the speed we are, we are going at right now, they fish between four and five meters down. Yep. But the good thing about them is that if you speed your boat up, they'll just rise a little bit higher in the water. And if you slow your boat down, they'll still fish, you know? Yep. So they be actually they behave just like a real fish and with the boat and with the control and how you steer your boat you can actually decide how you want to fish that particular lure. Oh, I hope that's fine. So let's see what we have. Oh yeah, shaking your head. How's it feel? Oh, it feels okay. Not uh, huge, but it's uh... okay. Is okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there it comes. We go. We're gonna see something soon. It's a sander. It's a sander. That's wow. a good-looking sander. <laughs> nice one. That's a good sander, you know. Oh yeah, what a beauty. That is a good looking oh, sander. Yeah. What is that, a six kilo sander? Yeah. No wonder it stayed down deep and was heavy, huh? Do you, get those, a... you get those often on these? No, no, no. It's, it's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, it's not the first one I got, you know, but it's, it's quite rare, you know. It is definitely a pike lure, but... Uh... That fish, he, he hit right when we came up on sort of a point where there was a shallow shoal yeah, yeah, coming exactly, out, exactly. about five, yeah. six meters, something like that. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It was on, on the edges, on the drop-off to from five, six, seven meters down to 12, 13 meters, you know. It was like a classic point, you know. Is that how you like to fish these when it's a big lake like this and there's, you know, pretty much the fish could be anywhere and then... then yeah. Uh, of course, if you have past experiences, you go where you caught the fish last time, but if it's a new lake or, or you've only yeah. fished there a couple times, yeah. what, what what, what type of things do you look for and, and how do you kind of plan your, your route when you're yeah. pulling the lures? I mean, before before I even go to the water, I have a, I have like a, a, a thought in my mind, like where, where I want to go, where I want to fish and how I want to fish. And, uh, and and already before I start fishing, I, I point out different kinds of, of areas in the lakes where I would like to present my bait and, for and the what, fish. And what kind of areas is that when you're at home planning the trip? Uh, I'm, I'm looking for, for edges, drop off. I'm looking at where the wind has been on for the last couple of days. Where the wind's been pushing? Yeah, exactly, because that's going to move a lot of bait fish, which is, of costly what the pike is, is looking for. And how do you use it? You know, you do part of it at home looking at a map and then when you're on the water you have the electronics. Yeah. You have exactly. your sounder showing the, your bait fish and your actual depth and you also have the chart and the plotter showing yeah. your route. And, exactly. This is and, like helping tools that is like help, helping me to, to present the, the lure in the exact place, you know, to, to catch the fish. Christian is also fishing with a dead herring mounted in a plastic lip skull, which gives the dead bait a lifelike swimming action in the water. Is that something you use often, or you know, I like like to like just like you said, you know, I like to to try different kinds of baits, you know, and sometimes they they want the smelly fish, the, the smelly herring, which is a you know a real dead fish, but like fish like a real crankbait, you know, you got the same opportunity with that bait yeah, I saw as you the got. Action in the yeah, water. Oh, yeah, it's, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah, real it, lively, nice. Yeah, it, it actually moves better than a real fish, doesn't it? You know, and sometimes, some days, some periods of the day, that's just the lure that they they want, you know. Yep. But I also think from, from a personal point of view, when you see like a real fish in the water, you know, you tend to have more belief in that than something in plastic or rubber, maybe. But some days, you know, they want the other lures, they don't want to touch your real herring and in the lip skulls. That's fishing, you know. It, yep.
Oh, look at the tail there. Nice looking fin. It's heavy. Oh, come on, let's see what it is. Yeah, you know. Are you gonna make me get the net ready? Oh, I'm not sure, Gordon. I'm not sure, you know. This is heavy. It's a strong fish. Oh yeah, there we have it. It's beautiful. <laughs> Super right fish on. going on. Right on. Oh, right on it. On carry. Oh yeah. Beautiful. Good one. Uh, okay, let's see. One hundred and twelve. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. One hundred and twelve. Yeah. Nice. Oh yeah. All right, go ahead and put her back. I'll put it back. Okay. As in Pike Secrets 1, we're at a lake where there has been pre-baited to attract carp. The bait also attracts a lot of small roach, which in turn then attract pike to the area. In Pike Secrets 1, we saw aggressive pike charging the bait school in the water column. But here we shall see the pike using a completely different hunting technique. Actually, there's been a pike in the picture the whole time. Can you find it? The pike is using a technique where it slowly sneaks up on its prey. It hides in the vegetation and waits for a bait fish to come close enough so it can launch a sudden attack. But the roach have already seen the pike and are careful not to swim too close. Here is another pike using the same technique. Do you see it? The pike lies without motion for a long time, waiting for the right moment and the right opportunity. When a bigger competitor moves into the area, the pike is intimidated and decides to take off. Here the pike is trying to slowly sneak up on the bait, but the bait fish have clearly seen the pike and stay at a safe distance. It is now later in the day, and the pike are now more active at dusk.
This is the same pike as earlier that again is trying to sneak up on the bait school, but again it is spotted by the fish. We have seen examples of how pike have different hunting techniques and have periods where they are more or less active. This shows how important it is to fish varied when you are pike fishing. Sometimes it's fine to fish high in the water column if the fish are feeding very actively. At other times it may be a better idea to fish slower and close to the bottom if you suspect the pike are hiding in the vegetation on the bottom. Here you see a pike grab a swim bait fished very close to the bottom. Fish all. Well, this feels good. Stay out of the weeds. I love fishing a small stream like this. It's real compact. You're not covering a lot of water, fishing a big area with heavy tackle. Instead, you're just kind of walking here, enjoying the scenery, fishing real light tackle, real sensitive rod. And even a fish like the one I just caught, about three kilos, it puts up a pretty good fight on a light rod like this. Especially in the month of May here when the fish are real feisty. The bait he took was a little soft swim bait looks like a little roach and you can spin it and it just kind of swims and then on a spin stop it kind of moves a little erratic to the sides so if you want to fish light and real slow that can be a good choice
Now I'm fishing a lake with swim baits. The boat is anchored up in about two meters of water and I'm casting over a shallow area. Swim baits are excellent for this style of fishing. Oh, had something playing with it. Again, he's on it. Oh, it came off. There's some fish in here. Pushed up against the bank from that wind. Ah, nice fish. That was cool. He hit it right on the spin stop. Floating lure goes up for the surface. He came out down from under it and nailed it. Ah! Ah! Not good. Ow. That hurts. Ah. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Yes? And now, two weeks later, I'm back again on the same lake. This time, Frédéric Julien from France is joining me in the boat. Frederic is an expert on fishing light tackle for pike and other predatory species. He fishes competitions on a very high level and really knows how to work different baits to trigger strikes from difficult fish. But the day starts slow and we only catch small pike.
Fish, fish on. It is a day with very changing wind conditions. When the wind is at its highest, we drop anchor and cast in different directions. But when the wind calms down a little, I can use an electric motor and iPilot to steer the boat very precisely with the remote control. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah, it's a real fish. Yeah. <laughs> Should we drop the anchor or? I put it now. Yep. That's a strong fish. Oh, he's going airborne. Ooh. He's not that big, but he's strong. <laughs> What bed did you use? Get the fish. Oh, uh, yeah. 30 pike colors. There we go. There we go. Frederick, we've been doing all right on the fishing. We've been catching a fair amount of fish, but we've been struggling a little bit to catch the bigger fish. Yeah, we have numbers, but uh, not so many big ones. Yep. But that's some days are like this, I think. Yep. And there's no doubt that this lake here has a lot of pike, and we've been catching, you know, several that are really, really small too. And one thing I like to do when uh, you get the smaller pike is uh, is fish the pike colorations, like I just did uh, on this swim bait here. And, and got the fairly nice sized pike on that. That's uh, one of my favorite colors when the water's clear and especially here in May uh, when it's after the spawn and they can sort of be, the bigger fish can be annoyed and be aggressive towards the, the smaller yeah, fish. I think there's something reminding from, from the, the reproduction time. It's uh, female and male are fighting a lot during reproduction time, but still now in May, late after the mating period, uh, I think that they're still hunt each other a little bit, yep. and uh, that's a, for for me that's one of the reasons that we we get good results usually early in the season with the pike colors. Yep, and I think sometimes you catch a small pike and you'll see a bigger pike come up and grab it, and you'll see one with bite marks. So yeah. it's it's certainly an aggressive mm. thing, but I, it's it's also a, a good food source, a place yeah. where the small pike are plentiful. And the pike coloration, it's uh, this is the swim bait that that I just caught the pike on, but 
you can use them in a lot of different situations. I got a couple other swim baits here that have the pike coloration for trolling. I like using these, these big wobblers uh, that are pike colors too. And when I'm jerk bait fishing, um, the pike coloration is, is also a great go-to. Actually, even when I'm fly fishing, I have these uh, flies. I call it pike-like pike fly um, that I tie to resemble a sort of a long that's, that's pike, awesome. pike looking fly. And, 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 and they love these too. Today we didn't didn't have so much success on uh, on sharp colors, mainly uh, natural stuff. Yep. But um, now and then I'm gonna try uh, chartreuse or, or white or something which is really the opposite that uh, from the natural color that we could try perch or or pike colors. Yep. It's um, for me it's really important to try sometimes, even if you, we get some bite, but. Yeah. Sometimes you have to get out of the way and, and try get, something else. Don't get else. stuck fishing one yeah. thing. Don't be afraid to, to, to try something different too. Freddie, uh, a lot of the time when you're fishing in the tournaments, uh, or at least some of the time, you're using swim baits. Can you explain a little bit about uh, why you like to use swim baits and, and the differences between the different types of swim baits and in which situations you like to choose one over another? I, I use a lot of swim bait because they are uh, really a, a good searching bait. And you have a different size and, and different type of action. And, and the good thing is also it's quite easy to use because yep. you cast and retrieve mainly a uh, swim bait is swimming alone so you can you can jerk it twitch it a little bit but mainly the the action of the body yeah is doing the job alone when when you learn them you can you can improve the swimming a little bit by sm some small action for, with the rods so the so the fisherman can improve the swimming of the of the bait but mainly the swim bait will swim alone yep. not like a jerk bait that you have really to to jerk it and, and yep. to, so in order to make it swim a swim bait is really swimming alone so you have soft swim bait those it's almost impossible to twitch them they just get this nice s swimming action very very tight swimming action and then after you have the hard swim bait like for example those two a two-part swim bait we mm -hmm. call it catwalk mm -hmm. why catwalk because this is this side to side action left right left right so like the ladies what, walking down the yes. catwalk so you cast and retrieve and it start to swim alone and the difference between the two part and, and the three parts is on a two-part swim bait, the, f the front part is really l long and wide, and every time you twitch it, it's sliding sideways, taking this part like a it's like a spear. You yep. know, it's gliding in the water. Yep. It's taking the, the front part works kind of like a jerk bait in yes, some ways. Yes. Yes. Yep. And and this part is the tail part. So. A jerk bait, you you will have to um, really turn it a lot. This yep. naturally, this is it's going to turn curve, it itself yes, alone. So I use this when I want to discover in what mood are the fish and and where they are because it's quite aggressive. So this side to side action, a lot of noise here because of the jointed uh, part. And it's a very aggressive uh, fishing because we have wide action sideways. Mm -hmm. The free part swim bait get a much natural S swimming action because it's in free part. So the f front part, which used to send my bait sideways, it's smaller. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't act like this. It's the whole body will give this action. Yep. So I cannot hold it at the same place so much because it's always swimming around 
and so you keep a much tighter line. This action is more, more tight, mm -hmm. the S action, than, than the two-part catwalk. So that's what we call the real swim, because it got much more yep. real action. And it looks so real this, naturalistic. Yes, this one I will use it when, when I get um, spooky fish, clear water condition, uh, but still um, active fish, because since I cannot stop it, I'm going to swim it all the time. Even if I swim it real slow, I cannot stop it. So then I need active fish. They can be shy, they can be uh, tricky to take, but they are active, they are feeding actively. And then I choose this one. Yep. This one, if I stop it, it doesn't, uh, I cannot control it so much. So I use not to stop it. Okay. So it's really cast and retrieve. Compared to this one, which is a free part, you get a lip. Mm -hmm. This one you can stop because of the lip. It stands there and the lip is holding the bait at this place. So you can slow it much more down. So if you have uh, hard condition and fish which are not active, yep. you, you, you will prefer a swim bait with the lip. Yep. Yeah, this is another two-part swim bait, the flatbone clicker. And I define it as a what we call a wake bait. Mm -hmm. So it's going to st stay really close from the surface. And if I reel it really slowly, it will make a wake on, yep. su on the surface. And that will annoy the fish and it will trigger the bite like yep. this. And then because of the leap, you can make this spin stop that you, you talk about. Yep, and because it's floating too, right on the spin stop, it goes up real slow. And I've had a lot of fish who then come up behind it and when it stops and it starts kind of floating up then they rise yes. up and grab it. That's what I like in swim bait with the lip, that you can stop them. Yep. We have several hours of fishing left and towards the end of the day we get some decent fish and great experiences. Good one, good one. The big pike has swallowed another pike and is spitting it out after being hooked. Look at this! Oh. Look at this! Yes! Ooh. Perfect! <laughs> oh. That's what I'm talking about! Now you see why I like the pike color down yes. here? <laughs> he was dead. He looked like he'd been chewing on that other pike for a while. Good one again. Nice coloration. The pike he ate was like about that big. Yeah. Way bigger than our lures. There you go. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. We're gonna stay here for a little bit. That was a good looking fish. Yeah. Good one. Yep, yep, I see it, I see it.
89. 89. <laughs> I'm missing one centimeter. You're missing 11 centimeters. <laughs> oh, that's a good looking fish. We are in Rügen, in the northern part of Germany. Button is a very large, shallow, brackish area that lies right next to the Baltic Sea. This area has ideal conditions for pike, with lots of nurturing bait fish like herring and large schools of sand eels. But the area also holds roach and lots of other bait fish. We are here with Andreas and Robert. Robert Balkoff is an experienced fishing guide here in Button and has caught lots of big pike himself also. Here he is with an impressive 15 kilo fish caught in the end of the month of May, the same period we are fishing right now. Soft baits are the most popular lure type for fishing here, either fish shaped shads or big jig tails. The advantage of uh, these rubber sheds uh, is that you can fish them very variable. You can keep it high in the water, you can keep it uh, deep down at the bottom, you can uh, jig them very aggressive or just do little, uh, uh, little jumping movements uh, uh, above the bottom. Yeah, they are so versatile. As so many times before, the day starts with smaller fish. Nice one, or? Uh, only a small one. Oh, I've got the smallest today. Uh, there is a general rule uh, when you have uh, dark weather and uh, dark water you have to use more brighter colors and if the water is clear and the sun is shining I prefer uh, colors in a more natural uh, shape and uh, today we have very clear water and uh, the sun is shining so uh, this one worked the best. On, on this size I prefer one single uh, treble and if you take for example a larger shed I prefer uh, two trebles, one in the front and one in the back. The most important one is uh, the one in the front because uh, I made the, the experience, the larger the shed, that uh, 
the, the most they attack on the front, on the, on the head of the, of the shed. So we are uh, right now in a channel where normally ships are moving. And it's about uh, four to six meters uh, in depth. And uh, we located some fish in the middle of the water. Aber nur so dick. Da ist er doch. So you have to keep the bait up a bit higher in the water level. So therefore you just uh, let it fall down uh, to the bottom once when you have cast it in. And then you lift it up with the rod, reel it in and uh, play a bit with the lure. Keep the tension in the line so that you know how your lure is moving. That bite might be a better one. I can come around. Uh, I'll do it the quick way. All right, nice one. Yes. Yeah. Very nice and very fat. Yeah. Probably a young fish. Young fish, fast growing. Yep. That's a very nice. That's a nice one. And he looks very fat. Right, yes. That's what I call a pike. <laughs> really nice fat fish. I think uh, she didn't have spawned yet. No marks from spawning. I think she missed it. One hundred and three. Nice. Very fat. Looks like a winter pike. <laughs>